Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. On Monday, at an emergency meeting of parliament called by Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras of Greece, he said Greece needs to restructure its debt and need an honest deal from its European creditors. He also said it is true that we are seeking an honest compromise with our lenders, but don't expect an unconditional surrender. To discuss all of this, I'm joined by Dimitri Laskaras. Dimitri is a partner with the Canadian law firm Siskins, where he heads the firm's award-winning securities class action practice. Siskins was recently ranked the top plaintiff side action firm in Canada. Thank you so much for joining us, Dimitri. Always a pleasure, Sharmini. So, Dimitri, give us an update on the latest developments in Greece vis-a-vis -vis schedule of pending repayments that are uh, coming due. Well, you may recall that uh, several weeks ago, Greece was given a very uh, short deadline for producing a set of proposals uh, that would potentially unleash uh, some short-term financing uh, from the Troika to get Greece through to the summer. Uh, the, the Greek government submitted a seven-page proposal, which uh, in many respects appeared on the surface to be a, a substantial capitulation by the government of Syriza. But there was enough ambiguity within the proposals uh, to cause consternation to the Eurogroup and uh, the Troika. Uh, and so, uh, since then, uh, two things have happened. The one is that uh, the uh, the Eurogroup and the Troika have not loosened the purse strings and alleviated the banking crisis in Greece. Uh, the Greek banking system is hanging by a thread uh, and uh, could collapse uh, basically within a matter of weeks, if not days. Uh, the other thing that happened as a result of the perceived ambiguity in these proposals uh, is that uh, more detail and more commitment, more concrete action was demanded by uh, the Troika, and uh, Greece was given until this Monday to give a much more detailed set of proposals. Interestingly, for the first time, as far as I can tell, this uh, set of proposals was accompanied by a threat by the Greek government that it would default if the Troika was not reasonable. I think it's fair to say that the government signaled it was prepared to engage in even more compromise, uh, but that there was a line that it would draw uh, beyond which default became inevitable. Uh, and so uh, that's where we currently stand. I'm not aware of any concrete development since the submission of those proposals. Uh, it, from my perspective, it's been unusually uh, silent, uh, the uh, powers that be within the Eurozone. And I think uh, potentially this threat uh, has caused uh, some reflection. Uh, so we'll have to see what comes out in the days ahead. But uh, as I've said before, and I think this remains uh, to be the case, uh, Greece is potentially going to run out of money, the Greek government, within uh, a matter of days if uh, further funding from an external source is not provided. Dimitri, some financial analysts are blaming Greece for the looming financial crisis, a cloud over Europe. Some even blame it for the declining euro, which is almost at par with the U.S. dollar at the moment. Your thoughts on that? You know, I think uh, at this stage, this is a rather uh, modest contributor to the decline, a very dramatic uh, decline in the euro relative to certain currencies, and particularly the U.S. dollar. What is really driving the decline in uh, the euro is the program of quantitative easing that was announced by the ECB and Mario Draghi in, uh, in uh, late January, early February. Uh, the ECB has committed to purchasing some 50 billion euros of tr uh, financial assets within the uh, eurozone uh, for a number of months to come. And uh, as a result of that, uh, the euro has become massively uh, less valuable vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. dollar. Uh, I think a lot mo the, the market, uh, rightly or wrongly, continues to perceive that a default by Greece is unlikely. Uh, and even if it were, I think the market attaches much less importance to that than the expenditure of hundreds of billions of euros on the purchase of financial assets by the ECB. And, you know, this devaluation, by the way, has benefited extraordinarily uh, the one country that has uh, been uh, most uh, vociferously opposed to uh, a quantitative easing up until recently, and that is Germany. Uh, Germany is uh, the export powerhouse of the Eurozone and a cheaper euro vis-a-vis -vis foreign currencies uh, 
uh, makes its products even more competitive. Dimitri, as always, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Sharmini. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.